Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at PG Hero. Now, if you're not familiar, PG Hero is a performance dashboard for Postgres, which again is a type of database that we can use in Rails, and a lot of times we end up using it in production, although we use like SQLite in development. Uh, and the reason why we use something like PG Hero is it's just, uh, you know, it's important when you're making your application to make sure your database is also running efficiently, which is something that you can kind of forget about sometimes. Uh, kind of sits on the back burner because you're focusing so much on the Rails aspect of things uh, that you're not necessarily worrying about your uh, database performance, how much space it's taking, any sort of indexing issues uh, that you might run into, system stats and stuff like that. So we're going to be going through this. Uh, the dashboard's pretty self-explanatory, so we're just going to spend a bit of time getting this set up, uh, and then we can step through what everything does here. So to get started, uh, you can head over to the PG Hero GitHub repository. I'll have a link to this in the video description. And in the readme, they have a rails.md section, which is what I have right here. I'll have a link to this in the video description as well. This will specifically show you how to set up PG Hero in your Ruby on Rails application. Now, again, we want to restrict any sort of backend dashboard to admin users only. So we'll be adding device and giving them an admin role real quick, just so that we have something to test with. So let's go ahead and let's CD out of here. I'll zoom in a bit so you can actually read this. Let's do a Rails new video. And I'll just hit uh, up on the arrow key, hopefully. Uh, it doesn't look like that's gonna work. That's fine. We're gonna do a dash D for PostgreSQL. And then we're going to CD into the video project. And then we'll do a code dot to open this up in VS Code. This will give us a project that has uh, Postgres set up for it. And then from there, we can go ahead and add in the uh, necessary stuff with the PG hero. Now there's two gems actually. I think they cover one here, but there's probably two that we want to add, right? So the first one is going to be the uh, PG hero gem. I'm actually going to do this in VS code, like a person with uh, half a brain. I'll come over here into the gem file, scroll down to the bottom. And in here, if I control plus twice and control B to hide the side panel, we can put in our gem for PG hero. And then we also want to optionally do a gem for uh, PG query. And I can just very quickly uh, say what this is for. Uh, so PG hero can uh, suggest indices. This is just coming from my notes. Uh, so we'll do this to enable this feature, add the PG query gem to your gem file with a version of two or greater. So I think they also cover it in here, which they do. Uh, so that's probably why it's in my notes. Um, but we're going to add both of these right away. We'll go ahead and run a bundle install command, just like that. Uh, and then we should be good to go from there. Now, at this point, what we can do uh, is we can run a couple migrations if we're so inclined. The first one that we can run is going to be for the PG Hero query stats. This just allows you to track query stats over time. We can go ahead and run this. And for this, uh, you're going to want to set up a task. So uh, actually, wait, before I do this, I'm going to forget because I always do. We're going to do a Rails DB colon drop. We're going to do a Rails DB colon create. And now we can go ahead and do our, uh, uh, actually, we already have that migration. So we'll also do one for, before I forget, the uh, Rails uh, PG Hero space stats. So what allows you to track space stats over time. Go ahead and run this. It'll work just fine. Now we can go ahead and do our DB colon migrate command and that'll add in all of these. So now that we have those, uh, the next thing we can do is uh, add device real quick. We'll just say bundle add device. So we'll add the device gem for user accounts. We can then, uh, as soon as this is done, run a rails g device colon install command. We can then do a rails g device user and then we can do a Rails G migration, add role to user with a role of type integer, just like that. And now we can come over to our side panel here, come up to app models, user.rb, give the user a uh, enum for the role and the role will be admin and user. And then we can come over to our, uh, well, let's do our Rails DB colon migrate again, just in case there's something I haven't migrated yet, which there is, that'll add our device stuff. Now let's come into our DB and our seeds. And I have some seed data prepared here that we can use. So for this, I have a user uh, that we can create. And then we're also going to create 50 posts, which means we're gonna have to create a post scaffold. 
And the reason why we're doing this is just we have something to look at where we can see what our actual Rails data is going to look like uh, in this dashboard. So let's go ahead and let's generate a post scaffold. We'll say Rails G scaffold for a post, give each post a title and a body of type text, just like that. And then we can do a Rails DB colon migrate again. And at this point, we can hopefully seed our database. So we'll just go ahead and do a Rails DB colon seed. And that should add all of that to our uh, application. Now, the last thing I want to do is a Rails G scaffold for a, or sorry, Rails G controller pages home. So we can have a home page. We can then come into our routes. We'll come up to config and routes.rb. And in our routes directory, we'll set the root to be the pages controller and the home action, just like that. And then the other thing we want to do is set up our uh, PG Hero uh, location. For this, what we can do is we actually have two options. The first is, and I'll just put it down here, uh, we can just mount PG Hero. So we're mounting the whole engine at PG Hero. So this will work for uh, localhost port 3000 slash PG Hero, I think. Uh, and the other thing is the path uh, will be uh, something along the lines of PG underscore hero underscore path. So that's just something to make a note of. Uh, the next thing that we can do, because we have the user right here, or the role for the users, where we have this admin, we can actually check with device to see if this is a admin account when they attempt to even access the PG hero path. We can wrap the authenticate user with the user, just call user dot admin question mark. Uh, because we have this role here, this gives us the ability to use Let's us use uh, admin question mark method. So we can use that to verify if the user is an admin, and then that allows us to access this, this route. Otherwise, it won't work. So let's go ahead and let's do a Rails S. Hopefully, I set all of this up right. We'll go over to localhost port 3000. Takes us to our pages home. And now let's try going to slash PG Hero. And that takes us back to our sign in path because now we have to actually sign in. So we'll come into our seeds. We'll grab the admin account, which is just admin at example.com. We'll paste in that and then we'll just make the password password we can log in and that allows us to go to pg hero we now go back to the home page real quick and on the home page let's just make sure we have everything set up right for this i'm going to just copy and paste some stuff into the home page because you really probably don't care uh, we'll come into the views the pages and the home page real quick and in here we'll just paste this in so we check if the user is signed in just a helper method from device you can also do if current user it'll work just fine we then use a current user email is role to say what the user's role is we then create a link to the pg hero path i'll do another br here i'll put a space here uh, and then after we do the pg hero path just showing you how to create a link to it if you want to we'll do a uh, sign out button which of course because we're using uh, rails 7 i believe this needs to have a turbo underscore method colon colon delete uh, and then we have our sign in and sign out uh, button so we'll go over here we'll refresh we can see admin at example.com is role admin and they can of course visit the pg hero path if we i don't know let's sign out let's sign up as john at doe.com with a password of password uh, if they try going to the PG Hero path, you'll just see no route matches get PG Hero. So here they get the error. Uh, they're not redirected to the sign in path. And uh, the reason for that is you kind of just don't want people to even know this this exists. So you might as well just leave it uh, as, as something like this. Now that said, you probably would be able to figure out if it's redirecting you. Uh, so you might want to change this a bit to make sure it's not redirecting you. But in this case, I think it's good enough for the sake of this example. I'm going to go ahead and sign in as admin at example.com again with a password of password. Click on PG Hero and we can come over here and we can take a look. So what we have on this dashboard, uh, the first thing is if you optionally want to, you can enable the query stats. You just have to go into your Postgres config and add in these two options. Uh, make sure to restart your server. So it's very nice they tell you that. Uh, and then you can sort of come through here. So for space, we can see that we have two unused indices. Uh, the first one is for the PG uh, query stats and the other one is for the space stats because we're not actually using those. Uh, so that what we can do with these is we just uh, generate this migration and we can then remove them. So this is kind of why I set this up this way. Uh, we can go ahead and generate this migration. We can then go over into our uh, DB and our migrate and the last migration file here. And we can remove these two if we're so inclined. So inside of your change here. You just say remove these two, you just paste it in, and then you can run a Rails db colon migrate command. 
and then you can run a Rails S again. Come over here and refresh on the space page, and now you won't see any unused stuff. You can see here the posts are currently taking up 16 kilobytes, but that looks similar to everything else. So let's maybe do something a little bit wild. Let's come into our console, we'll do a Rails C. And in our console, uh, I'll just change this real quick and then copy it. What we'll do is we'll just, oops, we'll just paste this in uh, to create a post 500 times. Hopefully that works. Go ahead and run this. And there we go. So that is just our seed data here. Uh, but we changed the 50 to 500. I copied it and pasted it in. So we now have 550 total posts in here. So let's go ahead and let's run a Rails S again. And now when we refresh this page, we should expect this uh, 16 here to change. So we'll go ahead and refresh. We can now see this has 88 kilobytes worth of data in here, which sort of makes sense. Uh, we can also come over to our connections, which in this case isn't going to be super like interesting. It's just going to be like the app itself sort of connecting to it. Uh, or in this case, the user account. And you can see right here what's connecting to it. We have one connecting to the Postgres service we're from. And uh, the other one is the bin slash Rails because of course we're running the Rails server. Uh, but of course, if you're using this in like a production environment, you're gonna see more connections maybe. Uh, you can go over to your live queries. We're not currently using any. Uh, we can go over to the maintenance mode. You can see the last time we analyzed uh, these tables. So we know at least that the posts are up to date in terms of what they are doing. For the uh, explaining a SQL query, uh, this is kind of a little bit more niche, but let's say you have something where you're like selecting users from users, uh, where the user ID is equal to, let's just do this, where the user ID is equal to one, we can click on explain. It'll tell you sort of what it does, uh, and then you can visualize it if you want to. So that is uh, the explain. The last thing we have here is the ability to tune. Uh, and for this, you can go over to PG Tune. It tells you which database version you have. Uh, and you go over here, it tells you database version 12, uh, and then your, I don't know, let's just say eight gigabytes of RAM or whatever, generate it, tells you what to set these to. And these tell you to set the settings in postgres.conf. What we can do is we can come over here and we can come into our, uh, I don't actually have it generated here, so let me open up my notes real quick, because uh, there is actually a command we can use to do this. So we'll come into our terminal, we'll hit F11, uh, and then we'll paste in rails g pg hero colon config. And this will generate a config slash pg hero. We can then come into our config and pg hero config. And in here you can customize some other stuff. Set the database adapters. Uh, there is also a section that I'm not covering here, uh, but there's a section that covers like setting up for AWS or Azure or whatever else you want to use. Uh, and then here's where you can set a lot of <coughs> other uh, settings and stuff that you can of course read about in uh, the documentation. I'm not going to go go over all of it, uh, but you sort of get the idea. If you come into the Rails section here, you can also scroll down uh, where they cover some of the other stuff we did, uh, including how to set up these schedulers. So the reason why they're not used is because you run the migration, but then you also have to run a rake task to uh, capture or to run the, the capture query stats every five minutes. Or for the other one, I think it was like once a day. Uh, I forget which one. But yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully this at least gives you a point to start from. Here's all the integration stuff for like using AWS or Google Cloud or Azure right here, probably, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and here's the configuration stuff. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this. If you didn't know about this, uh, hopefully you can sort of see how you would use this. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.